During the Tudor period, it was incredibly dangerous to possess different religious beliefs in the monarchy. It was a time of huge religious persecution, and executions relating to religion occurred throughout the whole of England. Mary I, for example, would burn hundreds of Protestants at the stake, and many would be haunted by what they saw. But throughout the reign of Elizabeth I, the persecution did continue, despite the Virgin Queen attempting to solve the problem with religion. She continued to persecute Catholics, and this had begun during the reign in particular of her younger half-brother Edward VI, and despite trying to reach a settlement on religion, Catholics continued to feel hard done by and poorly treated. One Jesuit priest who was barbarically executed during Elizabeth I's reign was Edmund Campion, who today is considered a martyr. He was brutally executed in London, but what is the story of his hanging, drawing and quartering? Join us today as we look at the execution of Edmund Campion, and remember as always to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Edmund Campion was the son of a bookseller, and was born in January 1540, close to St Paul's Cathedral. He received a decent education, and he was even selected to make a speech to Mary I at the age of 13. He was took under his wing by William Chester, a governor of Christ's Hospital, and he sponsored him to attend St John's College in Oxford. He worked towards a number of degrees, and he became more senior there. He even welcomed Elizabeth I to the university, and she was said to have been very fond of him. He earned the favour also of William Cecil, and also Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, but Campion was ordained as a deacon of the Church of England, which was more Protestant at the time, despite himself holding Catholic beliefs. There were rumours about his true beliefs, and he then left Oxford to go to Ireland. He was warned that he could have been arrested for his religious ideas, and he managed to escape to Ireland and then to France, where he then became a more prominent Catholic priest and scholar. He felt free from the religious shackles, and he learned at the English College before studying for another degree in France. Following this he then travelled to Rome and he joined the Jesuits, a sect of the Catholic Church. He became a novice accepted into the Society of Jesus, and was then sent on a number of missions to try and convert others to the cause. He taught at the Jesuit College in Prague for six years, and then in 1580 he was given a mission to England. His task was to try and raise support for the Jesuit course in his homeland. But Campion came to England disguised as a jewel merchant, and he came to London on the 24th of June 1580. When he was there, he was sought by heretic hunters and the authorities, but many inside of the prisons in London knew he was back in England. Whilst back in London, he wrote arguments against the Anglican Church, and his pamphlet which was published in Latin was distributed inside the city. But Campion was hunted, and he was being sought after heavily. He was labelled as seditious and was viewed as a dangerous religious criminal. To avoid capture he travelled through Norfolk, and he then stopped in Berkshire where he preached on the 14th of July. But here he was arrested by a spy called George Eliot, who took him back to London with his arms tied behind his back. It must have been very humiliating for him, and he was transported straight to the Tower of London. Campion was suspected also of being involved in a plot from Rome to assassinate Elizabeth, and members of her government. Jesuits were greatly feared across the country, and for this Campion was imprisoned inside the most formidable prison. Inside the tower he was held for four days inside the oubliette there, known as Little Ease. This was a tiny cell which was built into the wall of the basement of the White Tower. Here Campion would have been forced to crouch, as the cell was so small, he would not have been able to stand or sit. This was psychological and physical torture, he was taken out of the cell to be questioned by three privy councillors, including trusted members of the Queen's Court, Robert Dudley the Earl of Leicester and Sir Christopher Hatton. They asked Campion if Elizabeth was the true Queen of England, and during this he was even offered to become the Archbishop of Canterbury, as he won the three men over, but he said he could not accept this in good faith, knowing he was betraying his Catholic beliefs and ideas. He was held at the Tower of London for months on end, and was then tortured on the horrific torture device of the rack. This device stretched him limb from limb, and would have physically broken Campion, but it's believed that he did not give up too much. There were false reports that he had confessed, but was suffering heavily from his torture and ordeal. He was taken to Westminster on the 14th of November 1581, where he was charged with conspiracy to dethrone Elizabeth I, in collusion with a plot sent from Rome. The trial took place six days later, and after hearing evidence for three hours, the jury gave its verdict. Edmund Campion and others he was tried with were found guilty of treason. Campion replied stating, In condemning us, 
you condemn all of your ancestors, all our ancient bishops and kings, all that once saw glory of England, the island of saints, and the most devoted child of the See of Petar. The judge then gave the horrific and damning death sentence to Campion. Lord Chief Justice Ray stated, You must go to the place from whence you came, there to remain until ye shall be drawn through the open city of London upon hurdles, to the place of execution, and there be hanged and let down alive, and your privy parts cut off, and your entrails taken out and burned in your sight. Then your head to be cut off, and your body divided into four parts, to be disposed of at Her Majesty's pleasure, and God have mercy on your souls. He spent his final days in prayer, and was also allegedly kept in chains for a number of days. On the 1st of December 1581, at the age of 41, Edmund Campion was taken from the Tower of London for his execution. He was strapped to a hurdle, which was then dragged through the streets of London by horses, and the crowds watched on in the streets of the capital. They jeered and shouted abuse as he was taken to Tyburn, the infamous site of execution. He was dragged with two of the priests, Ralph Sherwin and Alexander Bryant, and when they arrived at Tyburn, a large crowd had gathered. The three priests were then led towards the scaffold. He made a short speech on the scaffold, and was then handed over to the executioner. While stood on the cart, the executioner attached a noose to his neck, and then the cart was driven off, and Campion was left dangling from the gallows. After this, and shortly before he succumbed to his death, he was cut down, gasping for air, and he had his intestines ripped out, and his private parts cut off and burned in front of him. Following this, he was beheaded by the executioner, before he was then cut into four pieces. His death was one which was a complete traitor's death, was one of the most harrowing executions one could receive during the Tudor period. Edmund Campion was a well-travelled and celebrated priest, who if he possessed Protestant beliefs rather than Catholic beliefs, could have been one of the most important churchmen in the whole of England. It was clear he was a skilled preacher, and he was well-liked and even impressed Elizabeth I early on in his career. But ultimately he gave himself over to the Jesuit cause, and this caused him to be linked to a potential great Catholic threat across the nation. He was just 41 when he was dragged to Tyburn and was brutally executed, and today he is considered a martyr of England. The rope which was used during his execution is still kept inside a Catholic college, and this is an important relic of the much celebrated, but also much persecuted, Edmund Campion. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.